Hi, I am Joe. This is Nellie Bly. To start everything off, I mean, I guess, you know, you gotta have an ottoman, you gotta have a chair for most, you know, living situations, that type of thing. Bed, this is where I sleep. It's a half inch plywood. And then underneath here is additional storage down there. So I've got like the, the larger, what are they like 18 inch tote, but yeah, larger tote. And they just kind of slide under there. It's two inch R-Max insulation to get up over the, the mounting and then half inch plywood, which was actually donated to me by a buddy of mine up in Vancouver. He blessed me. He had just done his kitchen floor, had the plywood, had the flooring and had all the tools to install it. So spent about two days over there and just did up a floor. I, I would say a past mistake that I would have fixed would be to level the floor because I didn't realize that the back of the Siennas are raised up a little bit more than the front. And so now my bed is a little bit like this, but it, it, it's supposed to be better to sleep with your legs up, I guess. And then we go back here. This is just kind of like keep general things, food. This is one of the neatest features that I really liked about the Sienna was with the third row seating, it's a big space. So under here you get all that extra storage. It's, it fits so much, not enough, but <laughs> it, it, it fits a lot. You would still call this a no build, because I haven't built into the Sienna at all. It's just the, the plywood's laid in there, the uh, insulation's laid in there, everything else. So I could literally pull all of this out, put seats back in, and it's regular Sienna. I like to read, and I have a lot of books. No idea where to put the books. Kept my, you know, my lawn chair, that kind of stuff over here, and then decided to just kind of make this my little miniature library. <laughs> the goal over time is to eventually build out each side so that it fits like a bookshelf facing the outside. So when you open the door, it's a giant bookshelf. That way on some of my travels, I could actually sell used books on the side to make extra money on the road. The van life thing was, it, it was a choice. Today with inflation, everything's going up. And I think it's just a lot easier rather than paying the electric and everything else, all those bills and working 40, sometimes 60 hours a week just to just to pay those bills and not much more. Or you can live the van life, the, the car life, whatever it might be. Put that money towards something that you really actually love and want to do and not just that job, not just that life. And I think that was kind of a big decision for me. I was like, you know, I, I want that freedom. I want to be, I want to be the, the, the guy that the 12 year old me looks at and goes, wow, you're doing the things, you know? The front is kind of just where I store, you know, baby unicorns and <laughs> all the reflectix. Uh, kind of like everybody has, just kind of cut them out to the windows. And I use a felt, got it at Goodwill for, I think, $7 for the felt and the reflectix. I found I had to use the, uh, the bigger 24 inch roll. And uh, just because the windows in this, especially the front one, are just so huge. Lights, I like to try to use as much uh, solar lighting as I can, you know, save on the environment as far as like batteries and all that kind of stuff that's going back into the environment. But uh, on the dash, I have a charging right now as a, it's like a ceiling lamp. And what it does is it charges and then there's a single little LED in there, but it puts off this beautiful pattern, at, you know, at, at nighttime. And then on the inside, it was like a 15 foot strand of LED lights, but we're solar. And they're bright enough to actually keep everything looking pretty decently bright enough at night. I go through probably like two or three of these a week as far as like batteries wise, which is why I try to save on the solar stuff because you really find how much battery you actually go through as far as like just using batteries to light stuff. Eventually get one of the, it's one of the smaller blue eddies, but the, uh, Basically, it's got two plug-ins. It's got a car cigarette lighter plug-in and a car charger on top. And even that, I mean, at the moment, I don't need. I mean, I'm still kind of getting by with just the, the solar lights, the battery lights, that type of thing. So the, the tattoo on my shin here says, keep it mellow. And growing up an angry teenager, you know, as teenage emotions will do, the, the, coming up into adulthood, I said, you know what? let's just relax let's 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 not plan everything out everything doesn't have to be perfect and let's stop and enjoy the, the things we want to enjoy and uh yeah so as far as where has it gotten me 
I would say a blissful heart. More joy than the average person. I smile so much it makes some people uncomfortable. <laughs> I've gotten to see things and experience things that most people wouldn't even imagine. Not because of van life or anything like that, but just because of appreciating that, that appreciation for life. When it's cold, I actually got lucky. I was at the, the Goodwill bins. Uh, it's like where you go and they've got like everything in bins and you just kind of pick it out, wash it. But I got lucky and I found this Ugg Sherpa blanket. Um, yeah, and I got it for like, I think two and a half dollars. Plethora of other blankets underneath of that, but honestly just one really comfy, thick, like blanket kind of thing keeps me, keeps me warm enough because I, I run hot anyways and then as far as like cooling off i've got like a just like a fan i've got a couple of other usb fans uh that i place around and i'm also working on a system that'll go in the back louvers of the windows to circulate air throughout via usb and that'll come once i get like a little blue out of here or something like that you know so cooking i'm so i'm still transitioning into the whole like everything's in my van van life kind of thing luckily i have the storage pod behind me where i kind of keep like my general kind of things. So when I cook, I, I, I use this table outside to kind of set th set everything down on. Uh, kind of got to bring it out, bring it in, that type of thing. So I'd love to build something more permanent in that sense. But for now, when I do cook, uh, I use this mini, I don't know if you've ever seen one this, this small. It's a mini Coleman uh, stove. So I don't really have to, to heat a lot. I go through a lot of ramen. I eat a lot of ramen. <laughs> um, but I don't get boring with the ramen. I, I get like the, uh, the different uh, flakes to put in, add different proteins, that type of stuff. Um, and then this is like my oh, coffee stuff. This is my mini kitchen. So I got all my spices, all my different ingredients, coffee, uh, more dried foods up there. Coffee. <laughs> yeah, coffee is life. I mean, you got to have it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how I do, uh, with most cooking. I don't have a fridge or, um, I try not to have to have like cold foods around in, in that sense. That way it's a lot easier to save money on less, uh, spoiled foods, that type of thing. When people think about van life and they, they watch van life videos, they usually see everybody in these really nice big sprinter vans. They also see people in my type of situation like this as well, where I'm living out of a smaller van or a minivan both work really really well but what they don't realize is the hardest part about that transition from going from having an apartment a house whatever it is, whatever it might be and downsizing so much that you basically have to go like this is this is about a quarter of what i have left as far as like just downsizing to get everything into the van um, so you really got to go through a lot of things and realize what, what do you really have to have? What brings you joy? What is something essential for, for living the van life? And also the, the things that really make you happy, bring you joy. For me, it's my juggling clubs, my juggling rings, that type of thing, my books, all my books. So it's like, you have to go through all of the other stuff that, you know, you're trying to walk away from, but you know, sentimentalities and everything like that. So it's, it's really hard to downsize. I think that's one of the most important things that people don't think of when they, when they start thinking of the, of the van life is what am I going to have to leave behind in order to pursue this? Because it, it's wonderful once you're doing it, but it's that getting to that point, you know, that's the, that's the side of van life that a lot of people don't see. Where we're at right now, it's a, uh, it's a, actually part of a program through the city of Beaverton. Uh, it's called the Beaverton Safe Park Program. They take people like myself who are transitioning from the household type of life. Some people transition on into an apartment or that type of thing. And I'll let them know when I join the program, I'm just basically, I need a place where I can be safe and park at night and not have to worry about the, <laughs> the knock. Everybody does the knock. I've only had the knock once in the last four and a half months. And that was parked at a truck stop uh, it was a love struck stop, which by the way, they don't allow parking overnight, FYI. Um, but which I didn't know. So I pulled the curtains and I went to sleep and I hear this. So I open up my little, my pull my reflectics back and I look out and it's a guy with a beard about like mine, you know, probably about 20 years older. And he's like, uh, you all right in there? Yeah. 
You sleeping? Yeah? You can't sleep here at night. Oh. <laughs> yeah, anyways, went down to the other one down the highway and was like, okay, let's. <laughs> and I stayed there for probably almost a month. Really good fried chicken, showers, $15, but you know, showers. Um, <laughs> and I think that's one thing a lot of people don't look at, uh, think about out here is like, where do you shower? What do you, that kind of thing. Um, I get a membership over at uh, Planet Fitness and it's only like 10 bucks a month for the membership. Um, and you can shower anytime you want, but if you pay like 30, you get the hydro massage bed, which is like, <laughs> it's worth it. Initial benefits of living the van life. Oh man. Joy, less bills. Instead of having to work 40, 60 hours a week, I only need to work maybe about 10 or 15. In that sense, it's like, wow, I have more time to read. I have more time to hike. So initial benefits, more reading, more hiking, more, more time to sit and think about life in, in itself and where, where my direction is going and that type of thing. So uh, the freedom of it, definitely the freedom of it. The challenges initially showering, because I didn't initially have the, the membership at the gym cooking. It took me about a couple of months to get a, to get a stove. I just, I, I wanted to find one that was going to be micro <laughs> in that sense, because it's such a small space. You have to really, and that's that, I guess that's another challenge is micro organizing literally every little thing as much as possible to fit as much as possible into, into a spot. When I started the van life, I, I got this van and because of the the, the credit that I had, the money down that I had, everything else. I wanted to get into a big, there was this beautiful Ford uh, Sprinter type thing. And I was like, ooh, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I want. And the gentleman running my credits said, well, you kind of have to have a different, different credit for that one, but we do have this. And I'm like, and so I started researching, you know, different uh, vans and things of that sort. and it's perfect honestly i mean to start it off so i think initial investment initial cost just the van alone probably about fourteen thousand, and then you go through this phase of build rebuild tear it apart rebuild it again so this is version probably six or eight of of the interior yeah so i'd say initial investment as far as that goes probably another two three thousand somewhere in there so when i started the van life I was a, I was a cook over at Nike for, uh, for a company over there and worked in one of their, one of their kitchens off campus. And I really felt like the universe was calling me to just kind of like, that wasn't where I was meant to be, not what I was meant to be doing. And I put on my two weeks notice and I quit. So that, that was scary. So, so I got on un unemployment, which doesn't pay a lot. Um, but it covers enough to where I only need to work 10 hours a week worth to, to kind of make up that extra difference. Sometimes a few more, you know, you pick up an extra shift or whatever it might be. Um, and right now I work at a, uh, a barbecue, uh, spot. So every Friday and Saturday I get some good grub, get some barbecue. Yeah. And, uh, situationally, um, was coming out of, uh, an interesting, just, you know, uh, not a happy relationship. And I went, okay, so what do I do? And that's, and that's when I really started thinking about, okay, do I want to live in a van? What kind of van? You know, all those type of things. So the very first night that I, that I jumped into the van and said, all right, I'm, it was the night I left my, my girlfriend. And I said, I'm done, I'm leaving. I didn't look at the temperature outside. This is the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, it, it gets, it gets kind of cold. Um, so the very first night, my initial night, it was 25 degrees above zero. Um, it was chilly. I had maybe three or four blankets, not very good ones at the moment. Cause for forethought, you don't think about that when you're just like, okay, I'm, I'm sleeping in the van tonight. The first night was, was interesting. And then as it progresses, it just gets more and more comfortable, I, I guess you'd say, but initially it was cold. <laughs> If you don't have like an adventurous soul, if you don't have a passion for living life, if you don't want to step away from the nine to five and the, the typical everyday lifestyle, I, I, I'd say just, you know, keep, keep your, keep your house, stay in that, in the comfort zone. 
But if you have an adventurous heart, if you want to see all the things that the 12-year-old you wanted to see, do it. If there's any kind of adventure, any kind of spark, I would say start with weekends. Start with, you know, take out the stuff out of the back of your truck, your minivan, your SUV, whatever it might be. Pull all that out, get some mattresses, take it to the beach, take it to the mountains, take it to your favorite park, go on a road trip, try it out. And if you find that you're like, wow, this is fun. I like the freedom of not having to worry about all these other things and just focusing on the adventure of life. You know, when you're on that road trip and you were a kid and you're like, mom, dad, let's stop here. And they're like, no, no, we, we got to keep going. You stop there. You check it out. You have the adventure. And, and I think that's something that I think keeps us all connected to that, that 12 year old self, that, that younger self that had all these dreams, all these aspirations, places they wanted to go. If we find that spark, we find that little joy and we stop and we appreciate it. Not later, not down the road, but right now. You stop and you appreciate it. Yeah. The biggest unexpected reality yet expected, peeing in a bottle. <laughs> it's, it's, it's disgusting and it's terrible, but it's a reality that Anybody who has spent any type of amount of time in a vehicle without like a tree to go behind, everybody has a bottle. I, 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 there's probably people that drive $300,000 van life vans and they probably still have a bottle somewhere around just in case. <laughs> My personal philosophy on life, it basically boils down to one word and that's love. If you love everybody, you love life. You treat people with respect. You treat life with respect. There's nothing you can't do. And I mean, on top of that, just imagination. Don't forget that, you know, we have imagination, that we're not stuck in the same, same state of mind 24 seven. There's, there's exploration to do within the own mind. And I mean, you combine love, imagination, and adventure, just enjoy life. If you don't have to work 40 hours a week, don't work 40 hours a week. It's, life's too short, you know? But I think pretty much just love. <laughs> I, I, I love a lot and I, I pretty much love everyone. And, you know, sure there's jerks and, you know, you don't have to like jerks. It's kind of like you don't have to like your family, but you have to love your family. And we're all family here, so yeah. If you have the opportunity to, to live this lifestyle, to, to at least try it, whether it's for a month, six months, or a year, I, I would say do it, you know? Because you're only gonna get it one shot at this life. So if you have an opportunity to enjoy it in whatever way, whether it's van life, traveling, just do it. I do have uh, a TikTok, I have Instagram and YouTube. Um, then I just created a Patreon, so I'm still trying to figure out what content I would have put on there right now. But for the most part, it's uh, PNW Joe 75. If you would like to be featured on different media, there's a form you can fill out to be on the podcast or to have your van toured. And if you're interested in watching more alternative dwelling tours like this, we upload every single Sunday. So hit subscribe and new van life and chill podcasts every Thursday. Thanks everyone for watching.